guys welcome back to the channel it's felice totally awake and i'm back with another video now today i'm recording in my bathroom because you know what guys the bathroom is actually my favorite place in the house i mean it's just where i can just go to get away from the rest of my family you know my kids and stuff and just get some quiet time and you know i just figured why not just go ahead and record right here you know anyway Today I want to talk about why I'm never going back to the Jehovah's Witnesses. Who would go back, okay? Once you learn about the truth, the truth about the truth, there's no going back, right? The Jehovah's Witnesses are liars, okay? Big time liars, all right? They are murderers. Oh yeah, they're blood guilty, okay? They are pedophile protectors. Definitely, yeah. They are um, abusers, okay? Yeah, they are um, definitely have some abusive tactics. And they live a suppressed lifestyle. So I don't want to go back to none of that, all right? All right. So let's talk about the fact that they're liars. Now, I remember when I was waking up, you know, I would go to my mom's job a lot. I was pregnant with my five-year-old daughter, the one that had to have several blood transfusions, okay? And I was waking up a lot during this time. I would go see her and I would just kind of talk about some of the stuff that I was learning. And I remember her telling me um, during those conversations, I remember her saying, well, there's just, there's just one thing I just can't deal with. And I'm like, what? what? Well, if you were to start saying that Jehovah's Witnesses are liars, I just couldn't deal with that. And I didn't know how to take that because what I was finding was exactly that, that Jehovah's Witnesses were liars. And she didn't want me to come to this conclusion that the Jehovah's Witnesses were liars because she told me that was the one thing that she just couldn't deal with. All right, you got your little questions, you got your little doubts, you come in here, you want to question things. But if you start saying that Jehovah's Witnesses are liars, well, I just can't deal with that. Well, how do you know anything about the fact that they may be liars? Why would you even think? Why would anybody say that they're liars? I mean, is there any truth to the fact of the Jehovah's Witnesses being liars? The Watchtower publications, the Awake magazines, and all of these other many of publications and books that they've published over the years, right? Is there any indication that they are liars? Is there any proof? that they are liars. Well, <laughs> you'll find when waking up from this cult that there is proof that they're liars. So, of course I'm going to come to the conclusion that the Jehovah's Witnesses are liars. But that's the one thing that she said she couldn't tolerate. And that's because her religion taught her to feel that way. Taught her to feel that anybody calling Jehovah's Witnesses liars, that they were the devil <laughs> when in actuality the people that lied to us they're the devil the governing body those watchtower and awake magazines and all those other ridiculous publications that we had those were the liars so those were the devils right okay so you know don't shoot the messenger don't shoot the messenger okay if your religion lied don't get mad at me for telling you that they lied Get mad at your religion. Find out what exactly they lied about. They lied about a whole bunch of stuff. I'm going to just tell you what I just right off hand. They lied about 1975. They said that the world was coming to an end in 1975. They published many publications um, um, saying that the world would come to an end, insinuating that the world would come to an end, insinuating that there was no time or need for a higher education because this system would be certainly... Um, well on its way by then, if not already gone, is what the publications were saying. And you can go to www.jwfacts.com and it will bring many of the lies up that the Watchtower has told throughout its history, okay? That was one of the big ones. And to be honest, that's not even a lie that I heard about 
after the fact, you know, me waking up and everything like that, I was still believing in a Jehovah's Witness when I first learned about 1975, okay? My grandmother is the first person that told me about 1975. Or I'll never forget laying on her floor, her big pillow that she used to have, and just, you know, relaxing on her floor. And my mom was in there too, and them just talking about, yeah, uh, there was a time everybody, a lot, of, a lot of the witnesses thought the world was going to come to an end. I raised up. Well, why would they think that? And exactly what the Watchtower would wind up beating everybody in the end, telling them that it was their fault. People had false expectations and false hope and they were too eager or whatever the words they were using. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? It was the witnesses' fault though, right? So here my grandma was blaming that time on the witnesses. Yeah, some people, they just was getting their hopes up and um, it was a marked year. It was a marked year. But the word, no, you know, I, I never did believe that. And I never could understand, what are you talking about? What happened? What made you think that, why was this even a thing? You know? So when I started doing my research and finding out about 1975, it just all made sense. And it's sad that someone, someone like my grandmother, that was an adult with children at that time, could live through and be a part of this religion in 1975 and not decide that, you know what, let me leave now because 1975 and 76 then came and went and we still here, you know, <laughs> and these people lied to us. We've been duped. We've been bamboozled. You know, I, I, I just don't understand how a, a grown person at that time could stay a part of, of something. But I guess when you're holding on to so many other so-called Bible truths, and, you know, I, what I know my grandma will say is, and I've, I've asked her, you know, when I've asked her about certain dates and the fact that they've passed, how do you feel about that, grandma? Um, well, I don't serve Jehovah with no date in mind. Oh, now you don't serve Jehovah with no date in mind. But this religion that you're a part of, they're the ones putting all these dates in your head. They did that. They're the doomsday. They're giving us this, this doomsday culture. We didn't come up with this on our own. Like the Bible doesn't even stress time, doomsday. It says that no man knows, knows the day or the hour. So the Jehovah's Witnesses are the ones that have always pressed the time and made it seem like the end was right around the corner. The end been right around the corner all my life. Not just all my life, all my parents' life. You know, my dad was born in, you know, all his life. That's what he had to endure. Now, I am thankful, you know, when I did talk to my dad about some of the, the 1975, and I just had to ask him just honestly. And he was the only person that would give me an honest answer. And I asked him, 1975, because, you know, he was a teenager, uh, a young teenager, when 1975 took place, well, actually didn't take place, okay? When that didn't take place, he was young. And I asked him, you know, what did you feel? Because this literature was saying this and this and this leading up to this time. So they they did put this in the member's head that 1975 would be the end. So when that didn't happen, how did you feel? And he told me, well, Felice, I felt like somebody must have made a mistake. They made a mistake. How could they possibly make a mistake when they're supposed to be speaking for God? God don't make no mistakes. And if you say that you guys a spokesperson, you shouldn't be making none either. Okay? Ain't no room for no mistakes. Don't be telling me how you roving about. Ain't no roving about. You made a mistake, a big one, that caused many people, their homes, their jobs, their 401ks, and whatever else they needed to, you know, be able to live in their older age. You know, people didn't go to school. Young people, not around here, don't have no education and not living their best life, okay? You guilty for that watchtower. All right, let's move on. They're murderers, all right? They're murderers. They are definitely but blood guilty. They allow people to die rather than to receive a life-saving blood transfusion, okay? Um, With their... Shunning policy is so cruel that it's causing people to commit suicide, okay? So, 
it's, it's their policies that's causing people to do this. It's causing people to re um, refuse life-saving um, medical treatments. It's causing people to take their own lives because they just can't bear the fact that they're just this such a bad person that's been kicked out of their religion. God doesn't love them. Nobody wants to have nothing to do with them because they're dead right now until they beg to get back in this religion, okay? You know, they're guilty for people feeling so low that they want to take their lives, okay? They're guilty for that. They're blood guilty. They are murderers responsible for women, men, children, babies, okay? They're responsible, okay? Pedophile protectors, they're, they're pedophile protectors. With their two witness rule, okay? Their two witness rule prevents the elders from calling the police if there's no other witness. So they are hiding and protecting pedophiles. If there's no other witness to an act of this crime, somebody comes forth and say, hey, mama, brother such and such molested me. They take it to the elders. They talk, they, they, they put them in front of, you know, the accuser. And the accuser's like, no, I didn't do that. Why would you say that? They, they pushing up on the word. Okay, well, we're going to pray. We're going to leave it in Jehovah's hands. That is not right. That is not the way you handle an abuse victim at all, okay? So um, they are protecting pedophiles. They are, they are making a way for the, ped uh, the pedophiles. And that's why it's called a pedophile paradise. You know, <laughs> come there, pray on the kids. You ain't going to get caught. You know, they ain't got no second witness. So they ain't going to tell you, you gotta, don't want to bring reproach on Jehovah's name. So they, they ain't going to talk about that. They're not going to report you because they don't want nobody to know that they got that kind of foolishness going on in their religion. But they got plenty of it because they don't do anything to stop it. They just push it up under the rug. Thousands of cases unreported. Do some research on it. You'll find. All right. And... They are, they live a suppressed lifestyle. I mean, you can't celebrate your own birthday, your child birthday. Like, imagine you got a really, you know, you got a kid on their first birthday. You can't even say happy birthday. Like, I remember still being indoctrinated when I had my son. You know, he's eight now. But I remember on his first birthday, I remember whispering, happy birthday. Because I was afraid to say happy birthday to my son. But it's like, okay, God just heard me whisper happy birthday, you know. But why did I feel like I had to whisper? But, but it was because I was a raised a Jehovah's Witness. Made to think that celebrating my birthday, celebrating my child's birthday, because it's such a blessing. You know how many kids um, die of SIDS, you know, um, sudden infant death. You know, my child made it. You know, it's, it's a blessing. It's something to celebrate every year that, that you hear another year. It's something to celebrate. But they don't want you to do that. I don't know. <laughs> they don't want you to do that. You may not even look a cupcake. Don't even look at a cupcake on your birthday, okay? No. They don't want you to do none of that. So I definitely... who I don't want to go back to that. I don't want to bring my children in that. Taking away holidays. No, that's joyous. We want to have fun. Life is about living. So, they, But they want to take all that stuff away from you. But there's no way in the world I would go back to that. There's no way in the world, okay? So, yeah. Suppressed lifestyle. Not doing it. Um, always judging people, um, having to log into Zoom meetings, having to put on a fake smile. All of that is part of being a part of a suppressed lifestyle. And then um, it's abusive. It's abusive for a lot of the reasons that I've already stated. You know, the fact that they're lying to, to us, the, the fact that they're allowing people to um, be murdered um, by not rece uh, receiving a life-saving blood transfusion or committing suicide or whatever, you know, um, the suppressed, li suppressed lifestyle that we're having to live by being a part of this cult. You know, all of that is abusive. And then when people do get this fellowship, you know, um, and, and they're, they're ostracizing them from their families, and, you know, sometimes they have it in their mind that they're the bad ones, so they're trying to come back. And then, God forbid, if they make another mistake, just have sex again or something because sometimes it's as simple as that or smoking a cigarette or whatever you know something that somebody can deal with internally with them and god you know they are ostracizing these people and making them feel like crap and 
that is abusive. And sometimes it keeps happening, you know, and the person, they just keep on coming back. They keep on going through this cycle of, oh, let me, well, let me get reinstated. And they want to get in this fellowship again. And they just keep allowing Watchtower to abuse them and humiliate them like this, making them think that, dang, I got to tell you what I did again. And then you ain't even going to show me no kind of mercy. You, mercy, you just, you out of there. You out of there. You get in this fellowship again. No, you ain't talking to your mama again. Okay? You shouldn't have never got your groove on. Okay? Like, that is total abuse. Like, nobody should have to be in that much fear. And it's just unnecessary anxiety. And I ain't never going back. I ain't never going back to none of that. Okay? Like, I ain't going back. I hope you do your research. And I hope you decide not to ever go back either. All right? Now, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think, and I'll be back with more content, all right? It's Totally Awake. Have a great day. Bye.